Okay, here it is. I could sell this hat and I can make $10 profit. Or you can work your ass off and pay marketing, promo, playlisting services and do 2,300 streams on your song on Spotify to make the equivalent. Which do you choose? Let's get into some artist income streams. Tip of the day. Something to really remember as you become an artist and you start selling your music is that your music is not your product. Your music is your commercial. Your music is your way of building fans, uh, getting listeners together, getting groups of people together. But it's absolutely not your only income stream. So today I want to kind of talk about some other income streams and definitely hang out for this whole thing because I'm going to drop some really big ones, right? Stuff that's going to make you maybe thousand times your profit right now. So you may be making a hundred dollars a month off your music. Let's make you a thousand dollars a month. Sounds pretty good, right? So let's get right into it. Obviously merch is what I used as the intro, but it's not the only one. Actually, it's kind of far from the only one that's going to make you a lot of money in music. The number one revenue source for your music is going to be your publishing right? It's where everyone will tell you to keep a hold of your publishing because your publishing is going to pay you out in a lot of ways. Let's say your song even gets a sync licensing deal where you don't get any upfront fee on a sync license. Say it's on uh, Home Wives of Kansas, the TV show, right? Uh, every time that's streamed, it's going to collect, that's right, publishing income. And that publishing income is going to go to your ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, etc. But you're also going to collect on the publishing side uh, besides the writer side, the publishing side as well, but then international as well. So international is collected through sound exchange monies for the master recording and then your song trust monies for uh, having an admin that's grabbing your publishing from overseas. So you're going to collect all that money. You're also going to get your mechanical royalties as well. So all that together, that's a big pot, a big pot of pie. Now, if we talk about streaming, that's a great revenue source. But to get streams, especially if you're a newer artist and an independent artist, it's going to cost you a lot of money in marketing up front. Nobody knows who you are. How are you going to get eyes and ears to your music, right? You have to actually market your music. You can't think that you're going to put out a great song. You've never put out a song before, or maybe you already have two songs out, and all of a sudden you're going to just go make all this money off streaming. That's absolutely delusional, and I'll be the first one to tell you that. Stop it. You're being an idiot. <laughs> right so those are two right there you got your publishing money you're gonna get your streams but you also have merchandise right your third is sync licensing i mentioned it within the publishing talk but sync licensing fees can range anywhere from fifty dollars up front to fifty thousand dollars up front five hundred thousand dollars up front depending on the song the usage where it's going etc so that's a great revenue source a lot of artists they only do sync licensing now we have sync licensing bands. We have producers that all they work on is sync licensing. They just want to work with publishers and sync license. Okay. Now within that income stream, I want to give you another revenue source that can come from that. Another revenue source that can come from sync licensing and working with publishers are advanced checks, right? So advance monies uh, saying, Hey, I want to own your master copyright and I want to pay you $5,000 as an advance for that ownership on your royalties. So whether you think of it as an income source or not, it's still an income source. You're taking the $5,000 on, right? It's your money and you're just recouping that and you're not receiving any of your royalties until that record or that music has recouped that much in sync licensing fees, publishing monies, mechanical royalties, etc. So there's another huge revenue source. You could literally write projects and EPs and singles for publishers and get advanced checks. So now you got advanced checks, you're making money off your mechanical and your publishing royalties, you're selling merchandise, you got three streams of revenue right there, right? Now, here's another one that's very untapped and I think really important. As you start to get known a little bit more and you start to build your brand online and people start going, yo, I like your song, your song's dope, <laughs> you're sick, I'm also an artist, how much would it cost to get you on, a, on one of my songs? Or would you want to write one of my songs? Or would you want to be on the hook of one of my songs? Or maybe you want to help me produce one of my songs? That is a huge revenue source that is absolutely untapped. And it's incredible that people aren't using the power of the internet to get into that revenue source as a musician, artist, rapper, writer, whatever. Collaborate. 
and pay for those collaborations. That's how you get paid for those collaborations. You're going to go, hey, yeah, I'll do a feature for you and I'll write a hook and I'll charge you a thousand bucks. I'll charge you two thousand dollars. I'll charge you five thousand dollars. Now, obviously, everything is negotiable and it depends on what you're getting from the situation. But there's a huge untapped revenue resource. It's massive, right? Now, one of the final ones, and I'm glad you stuck around for this, but as you build your business and as you build your fan base and your streams and all this revenue and da-da-da-da-da and you're getting sync licensing and you're selling merch and you're doing all this stuff and people are really starting to starting to mess with your music. They're like, yo, this, this dude's awesome or this chick is amazing. Like, she can write. Like, he's got some dope songs and great mixes. The music's great. You're going to start getting people going, hey, you know, you got a nice little fan base. You're kind of a little micro-influencer. Would you want to uh, have some free products? And that right there may not be an income revenue source, but I don't know. Anytime I think about not having to pay for the the yerba mate that I drink or the uh, the weed that I smoke or the, the bourbon I drink, whatever, to me, I'm like, that's revenue. So you can get those sponsorships. You can get people sending you free stuff just to show it on their Instagram story or to promote it. Or maybe just to send it to you because they hope maybe you might shout them out. So think about that. That's a big part of building your brand and building your music up. So hopefully this was really useful. Go get your money. Get your revenue sources. Get all this stuff going. You know, there's there's a lot of ways to make money in music. I think a lot of creatives in music aren't creative in other areas. They're not creative with marketing. They're not creative with their business. They're not creative with their relationships. They're just not creative you know like they're they can only make music or they can only play creative guitar chords or mess around with you know making samples sound lo-fi like get creative with everything you do in your business all right that's the tip of the day if you guys want to get a little more one-on-one -on -one, dive deeper into these subjects with me and uh and kind of just like figure out exactly the nitty-gritty and the actual tactics you need for these strategies you can join the music mentoring program just click the link jump in and we can get one-on-one. -on -one. I'll help you, uh, you know, build your songs up, get a better catalog, and also find new revenue sources for your music. That's it for today, kids. Love you. <laughs>